students all over the state of Texas. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Rita Santa Maria. I'm the owner founder of Champion School of Real Estate. And as you know, every month I am so honored, we are so honored at Champions to have two superstars that we interview. <laughs> And we get amazing compliments about the two of you every month. We get emails and great love notes that say, I got so many good ideas from the two superstars that you had for the month. So I first of all want to introduce Mark Demas with Mark Demas Realty in Houston, Texas. Morning. And Jenny Wang, who has J. Wang Properties in Houston, Texas. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I personally know both of these superstars have followed their career, and I am just so, so excited and appreciative to have you both here today. Thank you. And um, we were talking earlier, it's such a small world. I mean, my goodness, I know Mark's family. I had no idea I did and taught some of his family members. And I definitely have known Jenny for many years and from WCR, she was a past president in the Houston area. So uh, I will give you a little bit more information on them in just a minute, but I do want to say hello to Plano campus, to Fort Worth campus, to Austin campus, we have our new two-story beautiful building right at 183 and the 45 Toll Road. And we'll be duplicating that building next year in Houston on the Grand Parkway at Kirkendall. Then we have our San Antonio students, hello San Antonio. And then all three of our Houston campuses are with us today. Another hello shout out to our president, Kimberly Didelowitz, who offices out of our Austin campus. Good morning, Kim. Hi, Kim. Oh, Jenny knows you. That's <laughs> right. She does know you. So we have a great, great program this morning. And uh, I just want to start with giving you a little information about Mark. First of all, you have 750 reviews on HAR.com. That's correct. A little over that. What's the beauty of having 750 reviews on HAR.com? Tell our students why that's important. Oh, it's super important. Number one is it's the way that uh, consumers are, are finding everything from a mechanic to a realtor to a painter or the best restaurants. And whenever you have other uh, clients talking highly about the service or uh, the process and, and how great maybe the buying uh, process was or selling process was, it encourages them and gives them the confidence that they're choosing the right agent. And it's free. It's like free uh, press. It's wonderful press because, as you said, if I'm a new potential buyer or seller, we know everybody goes to the local board now to look at listings, the general public. Mm -hmm. They're going to go look at MLS and just take whatever the board has posted and do their first look. So if they are possibly interested in Mark Demas, they're going to go and find out what your other clients had to say about you. Of course. So it is so important when you're in the business and you get that first sale to make sure that your client does a testimonial. And uh, so 750 is pretty darn impressive. Thank you. Thank you. We're real proud of it. And his goal every year is to have 500 sales. At least 500 transactions. At least 500 transactions. And I know Mark, and he's been in business for quite a while, he wouldn't have that goal if that were not a realistic goal. Right. So is that your goal also for 2019? So 2019, I would like to do over 700 transactions. So, so the goal has gone a little higher. A little higher. I think we've closed um, close to 300, and we have a couple hundred in escrow right now. So couple I think we'll hundred, hundred in, in escrow. So. I want to make sure you all heard that. <laughs> a couple of hundred in escrow. That's some zeros behind so. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. A lot of focused work. So yes. good for you. And then we have Jenny, Jenny Wang with J. Wang Properties. 
And I was complimenting Jenny when she walked in this morning because she and I and Mark were Facebook friends, but Facebook friends with Jenny, she posted a beautiful media uh, video showing one of her properties. It's a penthouse property. Penthouse of Royalton. And yes. it is a two-story penthouse, as I remember. Yes. She has her own media company, and I was actually showing it to my husband, who's in commercial real estate, and said, look at Jenny's beautiful media video she did. It's so professional, so beautiful. Thank you. If they wanted to see it later, how would they find that video to take a look at it? Oh, simply get on Facebook if you would just get on J1 Media. And so that has all our videos on there. Or get on YouTube and Jenny Wang and you will see all the videos on there too Beautiful. as well. And also on Houston Chronicle Facebook page, and they, they posted the part two um, where it, the video that shows the whole paint house. So you can now, see when that. did you decide to add video into your business? Oh, I started J1 Media um, last year at the end of January. No, in January last year. So it's a year old. It's a year it's old. A baby. Um, and why did you decide to do that? I, uh, long story to be short, yeah. I started it was because I was always involved with uh, community work. Um, I'm a member of Women's Council of Realtor Houston, so I was the president of 2016. So a couple of challenges, challenges when we did events, we support mm -hmm. charity, we gave back to the community as a business people in Hall. Mm -hmm. um, we always had the challenge of where to find a photographer, um, who's going to be the press, who's going to say something about us. And um, so it ended up we normally didn't have anybody, and I was always the one got a camera, took photos. Exactly. So yeah. then eventually I was like, why are we doing this every year the same thing? So I decided, well, maybe we should go to another level. And that's how the idea started. Good started. for you. That's yeah. great. And then she implemented the idea. Yeah, it's really the mission statement. I mean, the mission about J1 Media is really, I'm a realtor, starting with a realtor, promote a realtor. And so. for a lot of our new people watching today, we know just taking your own phone and doing a short video on your house, on your property for sale, a lot of agents use that, and it's a very inexpensive way of promoting. If you can't start your own J. Wang Media Company, mm -hmm. um, go that direction. I do want to say in a formal introduction that you were in, given, uh, Remax Hall of Fame when you were with uh, Remax Metro. Yes. And that's yeah, before awesome. you started mm -hmm. your own company. So she definitely, as well, has a very fine, wonderful background, and most definitely, she's a huge supporter of the Houston Ballet. So I throw that into their introductions because we always say you can't be an undercover agent. You must be out there. You must absolutely let people know that you're in the business. So I'm just going to jump into a couple of questions for Mark and Jenny. What do you think, Mark, is the best way? Because I know you are very high on technology. You're very high on marketing. What is the best way that you've found to market yourself and your company? So I think um, number one is make sure that you do something um, with your headshot. So when I first started, I actually used a caricature. Oh. And I used that for, oh, I want to say at least 10 years. Uh, so it was something different. I felt like every, you know, I was in one of the classes here and they said your face is like a logo, but I was like, yeah, but your face is like, there are millions, billions of faces out there. Uh -huh. So how do I differentiate myself from the next realtor? So what I did is a caricature and that uh, helped me get a lot of business actually oh because, goodness. you know, people felt that it was uh, lighthearted at I've the time. I've never had a caricature done, caricature done of me That's that really looked like me. <laughs> Did it look like you with that great smile? Yeah, I did. It did. did. It, it was a conversational piece too because uh, when I got started, even though I was I was in my late twenties, I looked really young. And uh, with real estate, I think people assume that if you're too young, you may not have the experience necessary. 
And so the caricature, it, it hit, hit my age. So I'd go to listing oh, appointments. Smart. I would go to listing appointments. I mean, I didn't do that on purpose, but uh -huh. uh, I'd go to listing appointments. They'd say, oh, you're a lot younger than I Maybe thought you picture. were. And I said, yeah, and I bet you thought that I was going to be like bobbling because my head is so big, right? And so that would always get them laughing. And I always thought if you get a seller laughing, then it's easier to get them to sign the contract. Um, but making sure that you have nice media, nice logo, great listing material. And then use social media, it's free. You know, so video, and it doesn't matter if it's um, high production or if it's uh, mobile phone. I mean, look at Gary Vee, he's done amazing. Look at all the people that are out there on social media right now using uh, very raw video, but getting their message out. So people need to know about you. So when you say using raw video, to our new people listening, they're thinking, what is raw video? So, so that would be unedited. So you, if you look at um, productions, uh, I'm sure like Jenny's uh, video, mm -hmm. it's really nice and it's really highly produced. But if you're starting out and you don't have the means or the money to do that, then you can do it just with your cell phone. Exactly. And mm -hmm. go live. Mm -hmm. Live is raw, mm -hmm. right? You don't have the, the, the chance to edit, no outtakes or anything like that. We're so doing live. We're doing right live now. right now. <laughs> So if and I have spinach in my it. teeth, it's gonna it's gonna show up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> when we finish here today, we'll have had quite a few views on it already. So on the marketing side, Jenny, how do you like to market yourself? Okay. So I one thing I was just gonna uh, agree with what Mark just said, and so uh -huh. I think social media is huge. You can ask nine out of ten people around. So do you? actually sit on watch TV these days and I mean probably they would say oh I don't have time but everybody has the phone mm -hmm. and you know sometimes I have people sitting around me and say what exactly you're looking at a phone we're just like non-stop so social media is huge and I have real agents and say I, I just don't do social media I'm like why not first of all it's free and it's a great way to brand yourself I'm not saying like every day you do selfie all the time right. you know, but you gotta have uh, you want to make a point, you want to promote your uh, business image and promote your business. And so in that way, it's natural um, interaction with prospect, prospects. You never know who's watching you. Mm -hmm. And then um, second, uh, the, the way I market myself is I really um, learn it from you. That oh, thanks. From I can't wait to hear get, this. Get myself involved in the community work. You know, Absolutely. pick something you like to do. And I still remember I sit in the, the WCR meeting luncheon, and mm -hmm. that's what you're share with us. So I was like, well, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So you mean you may like a book club, you may like um, wine appreciation. Exactly. Um, you know, have one professional uh, uh, a group Your like I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I'm the mm -hmm. member of Women's Council of Realtors Houston. I support Women's Women's Council of Realtors, mm -hmm. and then I uh, I'm a, I support Houston Ballet. I'm ambassador. I'm on committee, and from there you get to know people have the same uh, common interest. passion mm -hmm. and interest. So right. you start to make friends. And then you tell them, hey, you know what I do? I, I do right. I love this because a lot of our new people say, oh, I don't want to walk up to people and say, oh, I'm a realtor. Will you give me business? And we tell them, well, that's not what's going to happen. Right. You don't have to be that forward. How do you approach that, Mark? You know, I, I have a really basic philosophy, and I don't like to sell the way I don't like to be sold. You know, so um, Bro, I've never, that's awesome. you know, I've never cold called anybody and, and lots of people make money cold calling. I've never door knocked. Lots of people make money door knocking. I'd rather do things like hold an open house and have people come in that are interested. Mm -hmm. um, again, having people with the same interests uh, is really important. So whether it's a church or it's PTA or whatever that you like to do, a car club, right. people like to do business with their friends. They like to do business with people they like. And that's where social media comes in as well, because with social media, the friend, the, the definition of friend is changed in our generation. You know, where instead of having to get together with for coffee or for dinner, you see friends based on the way that you feel they interact 
uh, with your common interests. Absolutely. So yes. you see them on social media and you, you like their presence, you like what their content is, and then you feel like, oh, this person is a kindred spirit, so I want to do business with them. That is um, the best description of why we're friends on Facebook. It is a different kind of friendship. Yeah. And yet, just as you said, you are on Facebook and you find people that have the same interest and you comment and then they're like, exactly, I feel like I know Mark just yeah. because we have common interest. Our kids are the same age. They're on baseball together. They're doing activities together, swim meet. I love it. You did a great example of why social media is so important. Friends are actually a little different with getting that connection in today's world. Right, it is. Yeah, also, um, when, when, you know, continue our conversation, when, say, you in the, the, the cooking club, where, you know, you uh, have a, a professional organization stand behind you, like Women's Council, certified uh, residential specialist, buyer specialist, so you, you, you have a professional network standing right behind you. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Remax agent, you're a co-op banker's agent, you're a Keller Williams agent, you know, just, you know, in reality, it's you, there are over 30,000 agents in Houston. 40,000, we almost hit 40,000. Yeah, it's 40,000. So how you want to stand out of the crowd? So you need to consider, hey, you know, this is your specialized and then, belong, you know, have a professional network stand be right behind you. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure you like some to do something, cooking or, or, or something. And then you start to make friends and, and you have a common interest. And then everybody loves to talk about real estate. Mm -hmm. It's not like you try to make, you know, sell your house Everyone or something. Yeah. When you said that's a great conversation icebreaker. Oh, talk about the housing market. Mm -hmm. How about that house? Mm -hmm. Everybody would. I tell one of the classes that's watching us right now, when I went in this week, I said, now you all are finishing up your last class. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that as soon as you get your license, your neighbor's going to say, well, how is real estate? Yeah. And yep. you're going to How's be thinking, gosh, I don't know. I just <laughs> got my license yesterday. But everyone loves to talk about real estate. And visiting with Mark this morning, when Jenny mentioned, get a designation, accredited by a rep designation, get your mm -hmm. CIPS designation, get something that has that network behind you. Mark, you mentioned that, and I loved it. He said, I'd love to come to Champion School of Real Estate and just take courses. Why is that? And believe me, I love hearing that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we were also talking in the context of actually being here. You know, I think yes. that there's a synergy that happens. Uh, you're able to, you know, talk with the uh, instructor and the other students and mastermind with them. Um, and I'm a big believer in getting designations. If you have to already come in for continuing education, why not, you know, spend an extra day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, and it helps you with your career. If you're going to take this seriously, then you might as well put some hours behind it. Learn as much as you can so that you can talk knowledgeably about the market when somebody asks you, you know, how is real estate and how, how would I do this? And if you just took a, an awesome class here, a GRI or CRS or we whatever it is. scripts for that yes. that helps you answer all those questions. With the scripting, it helps a lot. I also can tell you some of the teachers that are watching today will be very happy to hear. He mentioned one of our teachers that we don't have here very often, but <laughs> Sherry Reynolds. And Sherry Reynolds has been with me as a wonderful teacher, Champion School of Real Estate, for almost as long as I've had the school. But he said she was showing her listing presentation and he really was so impressed with it he asked for it and our teachers being as they are they said sure you can have a copy of it and how much it helped him transform so, my business i believe I, I i love that word i mean that it transformed your business is huge yeah. so as experienced agents as you are and having your own company how do you personally stay up to date and how do you make sure that your team is up to date? 
do you have regular training? Do you have coaching? What What do you like to do, Jenny? Uh, for myself, um, definitely always try to go to, for instance, uh, as much as I can. For instance, like I mentioned, I'm a member of Women's Council of Houston, so we always have luncheon, and that's mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. And we all have all have different speakers. So I always try to go, and every time I go, I learn something new. And then, of course, we're talking about champion really school courses, and sometimes it's, it's not for the credit, and then something I didn't learn, mm -hmm. and I would just register the course, and I will study through it. Take for that information. Yeah, I've got to keep up with, you know, what's going on. Probably, I you know, never think I know enough. It's never enough, because every day is a new day. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why these interviews are important, because we have a lot of experienced agents watching today also. And there's so many things you will say that remind will remind them, oh, I haven't done that in a while, or maybe I need to join a new group or what. So what do you like to do to stay current for you and your team, Mark? So we have a weekly um, meeting training at the office on uh, Mondays. And so we'll have a curriculum out, whether we bring in, um, HAR has a great you know training program, um, title companies, mortgage companies, anybody that can shed light on a topic or the industry. I think this next one that's coming up this Monday is gonna be about um, social media. I think we have another one on appraisals because, you know. Oh, that's an excellent topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. We're having, you know, mm -hmm. people have had issues with appraisals and how to exactly. overcome those objections. Uh, masterminding for me is, is really big. Uh, talking with other uh, top producing agents, uh, a conference if you can go to. Mm -hmm. So I like going to, uh, you know, HAR has some great conferences coming up. Right. And then any national conferences are great as well so that you can get a perspective of what's going on around the country. Because as you know, in uh, in our in the last recession, 2000, what, seven through 10 or so? Seven through about 14. Yeah, yeah. so um, California got hit hard before Houston did. You know, so if you find out what's going on in California or Florida or Vegas, that may give you a glimpse on what Houston may, you know, what may be coming uh, for Houston or any new ventures that are out there, any new disruptors that are out there that you need to, to stay current with. And there are so many wonderful online opportunities as well, mm -hmm. like Forbes.com. They'll have Inman. updates. Inman is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And Inman Conference is twice a year. And... Uh, we always try to go to that. When I say we, I personally always try to go to that. Um, it's the latest and greatest of what's going on. Right. Certainly the Texas Association of Realtors has great conferences and all of our local boards and associations. So we have our new people, we have our experienced people watching today. I want to make sure our brand new people are ready to write down what these two are going to tell us next because it will be so very important for you. And my question for both of you is, when you were starting out as a new agent, what were the two, three, or four activities that you did that you feel like sort of got your business on board and maybe benefited you the most? So what would you tell our new people from the get-go they might do in order to get going? So what I did is I got a coach, uh, or it wasn't a um, a one-on-one -on -one coach because I couldn't afford it at the time, but it was like a group coaching. Uh, it was by referral only at the time. Joe Stump, it was that's so old. Is even Joe around? Was good. <laughs> is he still around? <laughs> uh, but Buffini, and then I went to Buffini. But it gave me some yeah. structure on what to do. Um, I worked really hard on my marketing. I thought that was super important to make sure that I had good marketing materials uh, to present myself as a professional. Uh, and then I worked my sphere of influence, my, my sphere, the people that I knew. I uh, wrote down all the names of anybody that I was associated with, my parents, any friends that they had, people from high school, church, it didn't matter, uh, so that I could start mailing them an, an informational uh, newsletter is what I did every month. What do you think works on the informational side? So, I mean, this is this is old stuff. This is like 17 years that ago. Old stuff is basic stuff. <laughs> but you know basic what I did? Stuff is good. I had a um, I did I did a trifold and I called it the scoop. And so okay. one one uh, third of the trifold had uh, mortgage rates. So I just took it down from a mortgage um, 
one of my uh, loan officers, I would ask him, hey, what's the rate for VA, FHA? So I put that down there. I had um, statistics about the market. So I would say, you know, if you're if you're going out to your complete sphere, you can just uh, take the excerpt from uh, HAR's uh, monthly uh, economic outlook for Houston and just take some highlights for that. And then maybe something that's going on uh, with the city would be good. I had a joke on there, like a, a dad joke or something. And then I also had, I think I had, I don't remember if I did a recipe. Um, Recipes always work. Yeah, you, you know, something like that, or maybe a drink recipe, it could be anything. Or a, a great restaurant to go out to. Um, so just something to keep you in front of them. And that's also, again, why social media is important. You don't ever want to get, every agent I think will have this uh, happen to them in their career. And that's finding out that their friend posts up or says, come to my housewarming party or, oh my goodness, we just bought this new house or, and it's like, well, why didn't you call me? Oh, I forgot that you're a real estate agent. And, <laughs> and some things is, you, you know, this, forget. right, statistically, <laughs> buyers and sellers, I think the, uh, I don't know if it's NAR who puts out this um, statistic, but they're satisfied with the agent that they use. I think it's like over 80% satis exactly. satisfaction. That's the number. But I think it's like less than, or right at less than 25% or 20% use the same agent, even though they were extremely satisfied. And the reason is because they don't remember who it was. Exactly. Can't find them. You can't find them. I mean, even today where, we, you know, we have deals where I would go to a listing appointment, meet a seller for 45 minutes. We would get the house on the market, get a contract in a week close it in 30 days. It's not like before when you would have six months to build that rapport with the seller. You're, you're in and out in 30 days, and it's easy for that person to forget seven years from now oh, your absolutely. name. So if you're not in front of them somehow, so that's all I wanted. It wasn't, mm -hmm. hey, buy a house for me. Mm -hmm. It was, I'm here, and I'm selling real estate. I'm giving you value. Perfect. So. Very good. Good information that I hope everyone took down and Jenny, more information on that. What were the couple of activities you did to get going? Um, half of it is similar. First of all, when I first started, I didn't know, my sphere was very small. So I didn't know anybody, and if I could afford myself on billboard, I would. It was like, how am I supposed to do to let people know? So number one thing is I had a great, I was very lucky, I had a great coach and mentor. Um, who is the owner and broker of Remax Metro, Anthony Bianchi. Oh, so he showed me, you know, how to do everything. And then um, I went to Peak Performance uh, Remax class mm -hmm. taught by Sheryl Fair Fair Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, that was, again, a long time ago, mm -hmm. 17 years ago, was uh, for sale by owner. And I, love it I know all these. <laughs> we have this and little script. Top notch, everyone. Right. So I got a little script. Hey, that was a jump start. So I got mm -hmm. in the first day in the office. I took my paper and circled it out. I was like, oh, you know, West U, there's this house on Law Street. So I went over there, read my script. The sellers just came right out, out there and say, I said, hey, you know, um, you should have me list your house. <laughs> <laughs> Something very simple, right? Yeah, very yeah. simple. And then she's like, why? Because she had the for sale by owner sign on the street. Get ready and she was like, why? Question. And I was like, why? this was not on my script. So I looked and there's like a Greenwood King, there's a John Doherty sign. I was like, uh -huh. well, look at other people. They have the broker represent them. Your, your sign, sign is pathetic. And then, <laughs> and so guess what? And then she thought about it. She gave me a listing. That and is then, a great story. That is awesome. And then she saw that you were earning. I guess how I sold it. Yeah. I convinced my mom to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was that was funny. And is your mom still living in the house? Uh, no. no. So after that, she was like, "Well, you know, get rid of it." So I sold it. So I made you know three trans to me, two uh, double sided, uh, double sided yeah. on I one, and then it. I sold it. She sold her own so, listing. <laughs> so the spare, and I did what Mark did. So, you mean, just limited friends or family, tell them. I told them, I sent out my little cards, and I'm in real estate. Um, you know the moral of that story? Mm -hmm. 
the moral of this story is she overcame the fear mm. of going to meet a for sale by owner and listing a property. And, and I, I knew, I did not know anything. That was practically the day one. Exactly. So uh, day one, I was in the office and I was like, I got the script, I practiced. And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. <laughs> don't know how many of you will be able to sell to your parents, but it worked and I love you, the story. You try. You, you try. You just try. Well, you do it. Yeah, yeah. You do but, it. Uh, and everybody, when you decide to go with a company, we always say at Champion School of Real Estate, interview with at least three companies. And if you don't find your company within three, look for three more companies. But for sure, inquire about training. What kind of training do you have for me? So you can see their training, formal, informal, but you just have to do it. You have to do it. You have to be hungry for it. You know, when I got started, I was, I didn't go to any training, like formal training from a brokerage offices, but I just devoured books. Wow. And I, and I, and I wasn't even a reader in high school or anything, but when it came to my career and needing to make it happen, I just read all the books. I still have them, like the Tom Ferry books and the, uh, That's exactly yeah. how I got started. My Daniel brother Kennedy. Didn't, Daniel Kennedy. She was awesome. You're not that old, Mark. I, I know these <laughs> authors. And my broker was the same. She just said, well, read it. Just see what the top producers do and follow what they do. Yes. And being a teacher by education, I started reading books. Yeah. So let me add one thing is that in the real estate business is doers business. It's people's business. So we see in the class, we learn. It, you need to get out there, do it. And this is why you do it every day, you practice every day, and, and when the opportunity is not on your door, you're ready. Yeah. And this is why we're professionals versus for sale by owner, that's just, the, you know, I don't see so many for sale by owners nowadays. This is because this is a business, you need to practice every day, you need to get out there and do it. And, and rejection, failure, every day I have that. So. That's a part of our business. That's so, part of getting yeah, experience. be friends. Just embrace all that because mm -hmm. you only learn after you fail, after you get up. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. We have those in our marketing books that if you don't ask enough and get rejections, you're never going to get the yes. But I love your story mm -hmm. that the fear factor didn't keep her from knocking on that first door. Mm -hmm. And you just, you have to do it. Yeah, come to think of it, there's only two answers you would get, yes or no. So if you get no, move on. Now when you're looking, <laughs> both of these are business owners. And uh, a question that I know a lot of our students are wondering and they ask the instructor about it. So we'll ask these two as real estate business owners. When you have new people that make appointments that want to meet you to join your company, what do you look for in a new person? If you were going to be counseling them, Mark, what would you ask them? What are you looking for? In a are you looking this in like a, for a team member that works for me? Yes, or? yes. Oh, so uh, a couple things. Number one, we're really big on our values. So uh, they have to be positive. They have to be um, no excuses mentality. So I hate excuses, right? Uh, I only like solutions. Um, they need to be first class in all that they do. So the way. And what they, do you mean by that? Be specific. When I say first class, I mean they, they need to take the the, the job um, seriously. They need to take their dress seriously, and I and I'm. You know, I'm not one to, to say the way you dress. I mean, I have a whole tattoo sleeve, you know? It's not about that, but it's... But you've got your jacket covering But I have my up. jacket covering it up, you know, knowing uh, how to present yourself in the right situation, being on time. Uh, and then they have to be intelligent. I mean, that's just one thing that you can't teach somebody is how to so be So how are you able to figure out if someone's intelligent? So we use uh, two things. We use the one score testing, which is Wonderlick oh online. Goodness. So before they before they even interview, they, they have to go through that, which also takes them through a personality test and a motivational test. Then they also have to go through a disc profile. So I want to make sure I that... I love the disc profile. The disc profile. Make sure that they're it's on the right accurate. seat on the bus, right? Mm -hmm. make, make sure that they're... Mm -hmm. 
um, not just needing a job, but they're going to really strive in the position. And then when they come in, we also have them take a written wonder lick that was written in the uh, 40s, I believe. So they can't get past that one. They can't have anybody else take the test for them. Um, but really, I'm looking for drive. I'm looking for passion. You know, um, it's always a red flag when somebody asks me, well, how much money can I make? Mm -hmm. Because I really feel like I never, I never asked that question um, whenever I got started in real estate. When I got started in real estate, uh, it was because I was in uh, the mobile home uh, manufacturing, uh, selling mobile homes. We had two dealerships and chattel financing went down and I was, had a new house that we were building. We just had twins, we had three kids, my wife stayed at home and there was no other option but for us to succeed. And so when I spoke to my uncle about getting into real estate, I never asked him how much money I can make. I, I, I just told him I just need an opportunity for somebody to give me an opportunity. I said, let me, I'll work for free for 30 days and then they can pay me what I'm worth. Because I know that wow. if you, you... get a lot of confidence in yourself. Well, I just know how America is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you work hard and you get the opportunity and you really show up, then you're going to be rewarded for what it. you do. I mean, and I looked at real estate going... 3% commission, and back then, hundred my average sales price was like $100,000. Mm -hmm. But one commission would pay all my bills. Wow. Right? So that all was I, motivation. Yeah, all I said is, all I need to do is close one deal. I said, I have 30 days to close one deal. How hard can this be? You know, and uh, I got started in April. I remember December, I closed a million dollars in business. And I remember thinking that this is the greatest country in the world. I love Like it. where I don't have a college degree. Right. And you can make thirty thousand dollars in a month. This is okay. ridiculous money, you know. There are so many good points that you brought forward with that, and I think one that I just threw out is show up. So many people will yes. ask me, oh, "How do you get to be a superstar in real estate?" And I'm going to say, like Jenny and like Mark, there are so many individuals that just don't show up for work. They know they're independent contractors, and so they take their time in the morning getting dressed, getting around. If you're a go-getter and you suit up and get ready every day every to day. actually be in the business, you will make money. Yes. You will. So, Jenny, what about you? How did you first get started? Okay, so I look... Other than knocking I... on the for sale <laughs> door. <laughs> with... Uh, uh, Agents, you know, I'm looking for the top three basic things. Number one is motivation. So why mm -hmm. why you want to be in this business, this real estate business? What is your motivation? Because, yeah. So it's a top business. Before you know, you're. What I'm trying to say is, it it has to be your you're able to have the real estate to be part of your life. This is not to nine to five jobs, and while I'm on exactly. vacation, You're I'm working mm -hmm. because there's problem that needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. It's because if somebody has to do it, and it's my transaction, so I have to do it. So have you thought about all that? So there's motivation. Why? So you tell that new person, mm -hmm. yes, you can call your own hours because. A swim meet is as important as meeting a buyer. People mm -hmm. don't need to know it's a swim meet for your child, but it is. It is a full time, can be seven day a week job. Yeah, you can. I mean, we always have comments and say, "Hey, it's great. You work for yourself, so your you know the schedule is flexible." And it's because they just don't know how you know we met it's, it's it's all about the time management yeah, you manage it. They yeah. say you know they say you can have unlimited income and unlimited flexibility you just have to choose one yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly real, real estate isn't there's both. a whole lot to that <laughs> and then second is th that is the value it's you know, some people oh, like a lot of times we look at the glamour part parts of it. You know, you know, okay, be oh, a be yes. a realtor, hey, you got a big paycheck. That's what everybody's nice looking at. It. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but That's but true. but when we talk about process, it's the journey you want to be in. Right. It whether or not it's the value, it's the pro process. In in this process, whether you're gonna enjoy the journey before you only think about to get that paycheck. 
And yeah. if you enjoy the journey, you right. will do well in this business. And it yeah. will not feel like work either. It, like Tiger exactly. Woods says, it's not about put the ball in the hole, it's the swing of the club. So it's the swing of the club we do every day. And would you enjoy that? Love so it. it's the value I'm Love looking it. for. And yes. Yeah. So value literally dressing as though you're in the business and I throw that in because mm -hmm. it is so important. People Super do important. make first impressions. And in this day and time, I'm just gonna go back to your your sleeve in that yes, people have tattoos, but mm -hmm. You're going to cover those up when you're meeting someone for the first time because you don't know their feelings about it. Yeah, And definitely. it's not about you, it's about them. But um, it's about personality, it's about intelligence. I love the DISC profile and I use those for our own staff at Champion School of Real Estate. We use it in our marketing class. But that doesn't mean to say if you're an analytical you won't do well in this business. Right. It's that you know yourself, and therefore you know, if I'm an analytical, and you're my seller, and I understand personalities, when I meet you and I can see that you're the seller, and maybe you're a seller driver, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to kind of move my personality a bit in order to parallel yours, because I'm the salesperson. But success comes in all personalities, we know that. But we need to know who we are. 100%. You know, there's times in listing appointments where a seller, you can just feel their driver, mm -hmm. and they don't really care about the listing presentation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've had ones where I've walked in, and, and, you've, <laughs> and you just drop the listing presentation down and say, sign it, and then you walk out five minutes later. It's weird. But if I would have sat there and gone over everything, because they would have said, you know, the last realtor that was here just went through all the details, and I don't care about the details. Just handle it, sell it, and let me know when it's done. Mm -hmm. But then there's other people that you need to spend a lot of time with, and if you understand those personalities, then it's going to help you sell much better. So. And also, yeah, to continue that, what you're just talking about is also it's a value. So we need to really straight up this principle. It's, it's always hard to work for the value. It's always hard to fight for the principle. And sometimes you don't get the listing. Sometimes you don't get a, you know, the close mm -hmm. to transactions and buyer change their mind. But it's a value you strive for. So every time you get out there, show houses, it's not wasting of your trip. Right. Even if you don't close the transaction, even if the buyers say, well, we decided not to buy at this time, but you learn. Every time you get out there, show houses, you learn. You can apply to the next appointment. Mm -hmm. It's because you've seen these houses. Next thing you know, you get a phone call from the same neighborhood and say, hey, I'm looking to sell the house. You're like, oh, thank God I, should. I saw all those houses. So, so you, know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Another thing I want to add also is that uh, I, I I also encourage people. I mean, you know, this is a very energy-consuming business. Okay, Be, you know, some buyers you, you got to show twenty houses a day, so you do need to take care of yourself. And do you work out? You know, keep you know have a healthy diet. So that's a so, good point. Yeah, yeah. How do you find time for yourself? Do each of you find time for yourself? Do you take vacation time? Talk about your free time. Keep going with yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. I always do. For instance, I, 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 the first thing in the morning, I work out. So I have a good energy going. And what time going. is that? About? Um, 6.37. And today, uh, 5.30. <laughs> so she could be here on time. Right, right. right. Talk about commitment. Time. She got up an hour That's early. It. Yeah, yes. As, yeah, and... and um, I always try to take time out for myself before I go crazy. So, you know, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I like my mind just wondering about. Because as as our job also, it's it evolves so much. It's not just, it's not transactional. And when you have a listing, you got to be creative. You got to think about how I'm going to market this market this property. A lot of brain so you need energy. yeah, you need a little bit break in the head and and think through all that and have a vision. That's what makes this business very much fun. And I do take vacation, although you you, you can't completely shut off because there's things you know you just it's all about You're time. You're still energy. connected, but it's away right. from the regular activity. Right. Which what makes about a you, Mark? What do you do? 
You know, um, there's a, I have a couple philosophies about this. Uh, one of them I think that uh, Gary Vee put really well. He was like, you know, I think it was Gary Vee, but he was talking about how if it takes you 10 years working 40 hours a week to reach this goal, if you could see yourself at this goal, knowing that if you worked 80 hours a week, you can get it done in five years because you're putting in the same amount of work. So you have to really look at your personal situation. For the first, I would say, I think it was five years, five or six years, I worked without a vacation. However, last year, I think I took at least two to three months off cumulatively, you know, if you think about all the time that takes off. Mm -hmm. But when I'm on, I'm completely on. Mm -hmm. One thing is with me is that there's nobody that's going to outwork me at my office. So I really feel like coming in and putting in the time, putting in the work, and my team sees that I'm there to help them. And if any time that they need something, you know, um, they can count on me to always pick up the slack, which is important to me. It's my business. Nobody's going to love my business the way that the I way love my business. Love business. Right. I, when I realized that, that was a big paradigm for me as well. Just knowing that you can have great employees, you can have people that are on board, the values, they're on the bus, they're, they're going in your direction, mm-hmm. but they don't love the business like you love it. The way you love it. And so that's a great thing about this real estate business. You're in it for yourself. And so when you put in these 10, 15, 20 hours sometimes, and you're like, oh my goodness, that sounds miserable. Well, it would be if you're working for a boss. But when you're working for yourself and you're getting those creative juices and you're you're, just you're making deals, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden this extra energy comes out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you're at a casino and they're dumping oxygen and you just can't, you know, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you stay up. Right. But whenever I'm off now, and it, and it wasn't like that, I always have to remember where I am now. I have a great, great team. I mean, they're amazing. I can do this without looking at my cell phone, right? And you can do that. You can shut down. What I would tell people is treat everything like an appointment. So don't tell your client that you're going to a baseball game because they don't care about your baseball game. They don't care about your kids. They don't. They may think that you may think that they care, but people have bigger things. They're thinking about, well, what about my five hundred thousand dollars house? They're thinking about their own kids and their exactly. own activities, but how you're. But how them. you do it is you just say, mm-hmm. I have another appointment, you know, during that time. Right. You know, when you're taking off. It's okay to say, hey, I'm going to be on vacation, but I will be returning your calls. If it's an emergency, you need to have somebody else to pick up the slack. You need need to have a partner agent. Mm -hmm. You need to have a team member or somebody that's going to take care of that client. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you're making a big commission if you really take the hours. Mm -hmm. When I go to a listing appointment, it's the biggest 45 minutes of my time to an hour and a half. It's usually a $10,000 commission on average for me to spend 45 minutes. We charge 7%. So we're not... You know, so if I'm doing a $300,000 listing, that's a $12,000 listing side. So I need to put in the work for that. And I need to be available for my client at all times. However, I still have to take time to unwind. And the more work that you put in, the more money that you make, the better the vacations. You can then hire staff and and then you put in the work. You feel like I deserve this. How many businesses can you come in here? What does it cost now to get a license? Two thousand dollars in in classes? Uh, not it, quite. It's very affordable. That's too cheap. That's too cheap, Rita. You need to go up on prices. You increase the price. You need to go up on prices. No, I'm just joking, guys. But um, seriously, what kind of business can you get into for less than two thousand dollars and make a million dollars a year? Very few. Much less. You don't have to go back to college. Think about a doctor. Exactly. Doctors okay. don't make all that much money that people yeah. think. What is the average? A couple hundred thousand yeah. dollars, right? But they put in eight years plus res- residency. Lots of time. It's like 12 years. Lots of time. You're talking, what, six, eight weeks and you can get done? So put in the work. I love it. You can tell the passion that Mark has. You can tell that he loves his business. He's saying, I have a great team. I have good agents. But man, I love my business. And certainly the same with Jenny that, yeah, I'm working. Oh, I take 10 minutes off to the side to let my brain kind Mm -hmm. of recoup. But um, moving with that thought process, let me ask you, was there a certain point in time where you realized that you felt so comfortable with where you are in your business that you decided to open your own shop? I mean... Obviously, both of you have your own companies. How long was it 
when you were an agent that took you to decide, I'm doing my own thing now. I'm going to have my own company. Was there a defining moment? Or was it just that the bottom line balance sheet looked like you could go that direction? Jenny, do you want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it happened. I was with Remax Metro for 16 years, and I just left last at the end of last January. Like a year ago. Wow. Yeah, like a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it, it was very gradual, mm -hmm. and um, I realized less and less I had time to go to the office and I grew into my own so the clients started to you know I have my clientele so you know clients didn't some of them even didn't know you know which office you're entitled to it's you mm -hmm. and it has some, you somebody even come out mm -hmm. you know re, re what remax <laughs> so they couldn't say that so I think it was the culture wise that I developed myself and it's and I feel so de independent and I started to develop my own name in the industry and with my clients. And speaking of a comfortable, you know, comfort zone, mm -hmm. I, it was not comfortable. Never. It was <laughs> never comfortable. I was never comfortable. But, but that's what makes it exciting is that I want to challenge myself. I want to step up and you know do something different i mean for 16 years with one office so i was like okay you know it's time to do something different and if i fell which i'm used to you know i'll just get up and keep on going i so. love that if i fall i just get up and okay. keep going yeah that's it's, awesome it's it it's somebody awesome. saying that you know it's not it's not falling to define us, it's how we get up. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> and a little footnote to Jenny. I love it on Facebook when she says, I'm taking a vacation. I'm on my way to Beijing to my palace. So I asked her about that this morning only to find out she grew up within the Forbidden City. And it was before tourists were allowed to tour the Forbidden City. Mm -hmm. And I think, what an incredible background that is. And then you go forward with exactly what Mark said. Wow, you're in the USA, and truly, you can do anything if you just believe in yourself and have the mindset to do that. 100% mindset. 100%. So back to that question, sure. do we even remember what it yeah. was, Mark? You know, it's it's hard to say, right? Because we have our uh -huh. own, um, our mind changes a lot and, and memories and different things. But I would say a couple of things. Um, number one is I started with Remax as well. You know, my mindset was, so there were a couple of uh, tips that my uncle had given me. And he was a very successful and still is a successful real estate agent over 30 years. And he, his um, tip to me was don't be in the office he says because there's a lot of people that are going to wonder and just come around with negativity and why this deal didn't work or how are you doing it and, and keep you from keeping your head down mm -hmm. so just work from home or and I don't preach Where that you're comfortable. yeah I don't really preach it for everybody because some people need like to see other people succeeding so uh, it really depends on the type of person you are, right? Um, but I was determined. There was no way for me to fail. I had too much, uh, uh, I had all my family counting on me. I wasn't going to send my wife back to work. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to stop building this house. There was nothing that was going to keep me from um, making it happen. I just had to do it. Where do you think that came from? It came from not having a job and having <laughs> bills, you know? So I, I remember Honest telling, answer. yeah, I remember telling one of my agents, I said, man, you need, you need debt, bro. <laughs> you, you live with your, you live with your mom. You don't have a car payment. And, and that's yeah. why you don't have any motivation to close the deal. You need some, like, you some obligations, some, man. You need some challenges. <laughs> you need some challenges. And you'll work a little harder. <laughs> right. No, but I, I, I'm definitely not a debt guy, you know, Dave Ramsey all the way. But, um, you know, I looked at it after a year. There was only one person that at, that said anything about the Remax brand out of all the clients, and I closed 27 transactions. My first, you know, uh, 
two thirds of a year, pretty much, from April to uh, December. And it was my vision one day to own a brokerage because I, I thought, well, I'm not going to want to sell real estate physically for the rest of my life. So if I could set up a company now, I would reap the benefits of not having to pay. I'm not using the office anyway. I don't go to any trainings, even though they offered it. Mm -hmm. I, I just got out there, like you said. You know, there's only so much you can do. I've met people that just want to take classes after classes, and it's like, have you done a, done anything? No, I need to know more. Just get out there. You You're going to know. Experience. You have to get hands-on experience mm -hmm. because you can learn a lot in the classroom. Uh, but until you're face to face with people, you it. need to understand how to deal with people, how to help them make decisions. You know, we're not there to necessarily push a buyer to like make a decision on a house, but we're there to take options away so that you can say, here are the best choices for you. This one wasn't for you, that one, right. and here's why. So right. based on all that, this is the one that you have chosen. Right, and, sure. and you got and you have to know people, and you have to understand their position, and you can't get out there and, and simulate it always. So you get the training, and then you go out and hit you know boots on the ground. But that's um, it. Just made the leap, and it was my wife as well. Mm -hmm. She was like, "You you should just get out there. I mean, you're marketing yourself, and what's the company doing just for do you?" It. Yeah. So we just have a couple of minutes left, and I always love asking this question at the end. What advice would you give your younger self looking back on your 17 plus year career in real estate? Uh, what would you give to your younger self if you had the opportunity? I'll give uh, the advice is take Brian Biffini's class on referral as soon as possible. Great, great training. I did not take it until three or four years after. And uh, because I was thinking, well, I can say I'm never too busy for your referrals, but what what is it about it? You have to go into that session for mm -hmm. two days straight. There's a, a lot to learn, there's a lot to practice, and he will give you a gold mine. Brian Buffini is a national coach. A lot of companies mm -hmm. use a lot of him. A lot of agents use his company. There are many real estate national coaches out there. He's one of our long timers, still extremely successful. Yeah. So you would have taken the Brian Buffini course earlier. The first year, yeah. I would earlier. because that because it's really. Um, Definitely to combine what both of us are talking about, I think to me, uh, my opinion is to me, uh, there's misconception about being a realtor, being in the real estate, and people think, or even you think, oh, this is about selling houses. But I understand it as this is a people's business. This is why it gets tricky. This is why probably in the first year, 80% of y'all just don't want to do it anymore. And this is why there's online brokerage, there's uh, disruptions around, mm -hmm. and there's rafting, there's uh, open door, you know, and it's all, you know, Many going around and people concepts. buy and sell mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm gonna have my job for a long time because it's only our human touch and expertise and every time take the transaction to closing. So the human how touch. you yeah how you talk to the clients which is this really people's business to me, and then uh, you can never learn enough script how to have a conversation with each you know person and problems do arise their issues in every transaction but it's us to solve the problems and take the deal to close to represent our clients by best interest. Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. And what about you, Mark? You know, I have, I have no advice. regrets, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look at where I'm at in life, and um, again, I'm a, I'm a realist, but I'm an optimist, you know, and I look at the same way, that you fail forward, that traumas in your life, um, difficulties, whatever it is, it's there to strengthen you. You know, and, uh, you know, when you prune a tree, I'm sure the tree is not feeling it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, why are you cutting my limbs? But right. it's to make it bigger and better. Um, it's a great I, you know, 
I think the only thing, um, I didn't have any regrets really. The only one I would say is I, I wish I would have started in California because I just love the West Coast. <laughs> Real estate's, uh, um, you know, really expensive over there. And uh -huh. I think I would have done much better. Uh, uh, although we're doing fine. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. Um, I think that really though, honestly, it would be to leverage faster than I did. There was a paradigm about maybe six years ago where it was, I thought clients wanted me because they would ask for me and they do. They'll say, oh, Mark, we want Mark to do this or we want, you know, mm -hmm. we want to use you. And when you start getting a buyer's agent or a listing agent, you start doubting whether or not those people are going to do are well for you. stay with you because it's not Mark. Right. Mm -hmm. But people don't care about me. They care about what I do for them. They care about the value that I give. Mm -hmm. Right, they care that I'm patient with them, even though I'm an impatient person, my wife would say, right? But I'm patient with my clients. They care that I'm knowledgeable because I take education seriously, right? And making sure that I'm staying up to date on things. They care that I'm passionate about it and confident, which I am, you gotta be on what you're doing. And when you love it, you, you de develop more confidence. And so those are values that as long as I have those values in my people, then my people will also give them the same type of experience. And if you read my reviews, the best ones are when it says, the Mark Demas team was amazing. Kyle was our listing agent. Crystal, our transaction coordinator, did this. The photographer, Tomas, did this. And it was just all the, the people involved to, to bring an experience that they're gonna refer people to and giving us a five-star review. So I wish I would have leveraged a little bit quicker, um, gotten assistant a little bit quicker, and that would have uh, helped me, you know, do more business with less of my time. So. We hear that a lot where the agent says, I was so worried about adding a buyer's agent or, adding, or bringing in a transaction specialist. You're saying, I wish I would have done the springboard sooner into your own company. We have learned so many great things today from both of you. I love it that they are both so energetic and passionate <laughs> about their business. It's the energy. It is. <laughs> we have Mark Demis with Mark Demis Realty. We have Jenny Wang with Jay Wang Properties. And uh, I wouldn't be true to myself if I didn't just mention a couple of things about Champion School of Real Estate. One is we have the coolest ever drone pilot roof inspection course. Wow. If you are interested in understanding about drones, how to get your pilot's license, we had our first class in Austin just a week ago. Those 13, 14 people loved every minute of it. Your tuition includes insurance, it includes your drone you get to fly, it includes your certification application, and it is the hot thing out there for inspectors and real estate agents wanting to understand how the drone works, but you are able to also get a prep with that course, and it is so hot right now. <laughs> so, the other being my book, and in a few months down the road, these two will be in our book. We take our wonderful top producers and we take the words that they say and we have a great writer that takes your words, puts them into wonderful bullet points that tell your story on how you got to be to where you are. And the first volume will be out actually tomorrow at our career fairs right. across the state of Texas. Sweet, that's awesome. And we have a number of amazing top producers around the state of Texas. And it's only $14.95 for that book. You'll have it at career fair tomorrow. The one in Houston is at the North Campus, 10 to 2. We have like almost 600 people now, new students that will be there. We have the Plano campus tomorrow with almost that many. We have Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio. So attend our career fair brokers. It's totally free. We love to set you up so that you can have a table, tell people about your company. And then of course our new people love dropping in 
to uh, find out about your company and decide which one they should go to. So see you tomorrow at Career Fair, 10 to 2. See you all around the city of Houston. Thank you, Rita. And I know Thank everyone you, watching today are like, I want to be Mark, mm -hmm. I want to be Jenny. Because that's what I always hear. You're professional, you're smart, you're successful, you're kind. Thank you. So you're welcome. Thank you for your business, all of our watching students today at Champion School of Real Estate. We appreciate your business so very, very much. Thanks. Best wishes to everybody. Yes, take care.